Hello, my name is Luke O'Neill. I'm a student at Durham Business School. Today we're going to talk to you about the innovation of the console markets. The evolution of football games has gone from FIFA 1994 to FIFA 2011. Teams are ready and bursting to get the game underway. In action games from Doom. To Bad Company. From Pole Position. Gran Turismo 5. From Mystery House. To Final Fantasy 14. Now we are going to present an overview of the evolution of the game console hardware. The concept of video gaming found in 50s based on vector displays. But the first set that used analog video was Magnavox Odyssey. It was followed by simplified versions Odyssey 100, Odyssey 200. The second generation used cartridges that had more data for more complex gameplay. As we move on the third generation, we can see more colors are used and front loading cartridges are introduced. In the fourth generation, the increased storages in cartridges, therefore, more detailed graphics were enabled. In the fifth generation, introduction of CDs uh, and more powerful processors increased the graphical performance and the game complexity even more. The sixth generation, PC-like architectures and internal components were introduced, and CDs were replaced with DVDs. At the seventh generation, which is the current one, Blu-rays and HD DVDs replaced CDs, and now we have motion as an input that changed the whole, whole experience of gaming. Now we're moving on to the eighth generation. could classify it in three stages. First of all, you've got the fluid state that moves into the dominant design and then the incremental changes. The fluid state could classify as, a, as when the product and the design has not gained acceptance within the marketplace, hasn't got a standardization of features, and the design changes rapidly between different manufacturers. At this time, the manufacturers work hard to try and persuade the customers that their design is the best one for the marketplace. Once one of the manufacturers has been able to persuade customers that is the best, they'll normally take the form of the dominant design. The dominant design is the one in the market is the design in the marketplace it has the biggest following that they hit standardization of features that others others must follow if they want to win a big margin within the market. Once the dominant design has been met, the manufacturer also will then look at incremental changes. As technology advances, they will add, they'll make small changes to the dominant design as technology advances to keep up with the times. If you think about it, in the games industry, um, the model doesn't fit quite as well. With technology, you've got um, electronic technology particularly, you've got a very different situation to kind of bikes and cars, which very clearly have a radical stage of innovation, a clear dominant design. Yeah. Because technology changes so quickly, um, it never really stops and gets into that away from that fluid state. There's revolutions almost as fast as um, people can bring out the next console or the next. Uh, type of TV, that kind of thing, um, and that that as a whole means that industry never really settles on a dominant design. Why hasn't a dominant design emerged in the games industry? There's been no strategic alignment of primary games producers because of their ability to produce over 
multi-platform games and multi-platform consoles. Uh, originally, games manufacturers would produce titles for certain consoles, but over time that has changed, as people now are looking to play a wider variety of games. So the, the, the games manufacturers have been able to produce games for multi-platform. This gives them more market power as they are looking to develop games for each platform available to them, spreading the game worldwide and console-wide. This has meant that there's been no dominant design emerged because of the, the multi-platform type, the nature of the games has meant that they can be played on any console and anywhere in the world really. They are not, they are not constricted by a certain brand or image of a console. If you think back to the uh, VHS Betamax case where VHS won, um, one of the key reasons for that was uh, sharing. People shared their um, their brand, their VHS, and that had a snowballing effect. This isn't quite the case in the video game industry. Um, if you think about the PlayStation Network, for example, that has uh, millions and millions of people uh, on that, and so does the Xbox. And so, because both of those networks have a lot of people, the additional utility of someone else joining that is neg negligible. Um, there's enough people on each one for you to play them. 30 player multi game um, wherever you are and you have these so rather than having playing with your actual friends you can play with online friends and that means that the community is much larger and in turn the sharing effect is lessened. Right James, um, I think we'll open a shop. Uh, I don't know what shop to open. Uh, I've got a lot of shells, but I'm thinking about using a long tail, but I don't quite know what that means. Don't need to explain that to me, please. Right, okay. So you've uh, you've got your shop, right? Yeah. And in your shop, you've got a lot of shelves. Yeah. Now, each space on that shelf is costing you a certain amount of money. Yeah. You have to pay for staff wages, rent, uh, you know, all of your fixed costs. Yeah. So each shelf costs you a certain amount. Right, next you've got to consider you've only got a limited number of shelves. Yeah. So you want to fill your shelves with products that are going to sell in the highest possible volume. Yeah. So you're going to have a lot to choose from. You're going to have some products which won't sell. They'll be misses. Yeah. You're going to have some products which are going to sell some. Yeah. And you're going to have some products, hit products, that sell a lot. Right. So with your limited amount of shelf space and your fixed costs, only certain products will be affordable and you want to choose the products that are going to sell the absolute most. They're your hit products. You fill the whole store with hits. That's your, that's your goal. Sounds good, thank you. So, I was thinking about going to a video game store, and, I don't know, from what I've heard, you're telling me that I have to use the long tail, and that means I can, every item that I sell can make me money, so I should stock every item available to me. Yes. So, how, how can I do that? Right, the internet's because you're making this change from uh, atoms to bytes. Yeah. Uh, there's no physical storage anymore. You that infinite shelf space exists now, and your costs have been lowered because you don't have staff, you don't have rent anymore, so you can afford to stock everything, and therefore you should. Oh. I'll explain to you how that works. This section will discuss the long tail theory. Whilst long tail theory has been applied extensively to book and music industries, few studies examine the games industry. In this section, we will apply the long tail theory to freely available game sales data. Let's start by introducing some of the mathematics that concern the long tail. A long tail plot is described by a power law function of the form y equals ax to the power k. y is the total number of sales units sold of each game, x is the sales banking of each game, and a and k are constants. If we take logs of both sides, this produces a function in the form y equals mx plus c. When plotted, this produces a straight line. However, in fact, we find that the plots remain linear at the beginning and then fall off. 
This is common in real sales data for long tail distributions. This effect is referred to as a truncated distribution and is caused by bottlenecks in supply and demand. As a consequence of this truncation, latent demand exists within the industry. Additionally, we note that over time, the linear portion of the graph extends for each subsequent games console generation. We can speculate that the three factors contribute to this. Firstly, more games are being produced. And secondly, there is better connected supply and demand. Thirdly, digital distribution channels now exist. We expect that this third point will have a greater effect in the future as, a, as digital distribution becomes ever more popular.